Hey, welcome back to Faith Assembly of God, the Revelation class. Uh, we have been going through the church at Smyrna. It's the second church in the book of Revelation that is mentioned, the seven churches. And we're going to be looking at the good that Christ mentions. Now, the bad is going to be a very short video. So next week, just know this week's video is going to be a little bit longer. Next week, much shorter. Kind of evens out that way. But the good thing that we see first right out of the gate, what Christ said is, I know your tribulation. The Greek word there is thlipson, which means your pressure or your distress. It's, it's kind of like saying, I know you're being crushed. Um, I know your poverty, he says, which is the Greek word petoshien. I think I said that right. And it means you're begging, but you are rich, plosius, uh, which means abundant wealth. And the blasphemy or slander, I'm not even going to try with the Greek. It's probably the easiest Greek word there is. I think it's blasphemos. But uh, I'm not going to do that again. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired with the Greek words already. I'm sure you are too. But he says, I know your tribulation. I know your poverty. I know you are rich. But I also know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, we may read that, we may scratch our heads, because in the background section, we know Smyrna is a very wealthy city. It's a harbor town, it's a shipping town, it's a merchant town. It's a town that was going to make a lot of money and be very wealthy. But when Jesus says, I know you're rich, you're, you're rich, he says, I know your tribulation and your poverty. He doesn't say, I know you're rich. He says, uh, I know your poverty, but you're rich. Okay, I said that a little funny there. When Jesus says, but you're rich, we have to ask, well, what exactly is he getting at here? Because he says, I know your poverty. They're in a rich town. I know your poverty. Which is it? What's it? What are you, what are you getting at here? Well, what else do we know about Smyrna? It's the capital of emperor worship, if you recall. It's the place you go. If you want to show how loyal to Caesar you are, you go to Smyrna and you worship Caesar. You swear your allegiance to Caesar. You play by the rules in a city like that. You definitely don't go around saying somebody else is Lord when Caesar so obviously is Lord. I mean, look how great this city of Caesar is. How could you possibly think some Jewish carpenter is Lord? And yet Christ tells us to give to Caesar what is Caesar, render to God what is God's. You cannot give to Caesar what Christ has shed his blood for, what God has shed his blood for. We don't bow to any emperor. We kneel before the king of kings. And so we have to keep that in mind. That's going to cause persecution in a city like Smyrna. It's going to cause a lot of problems in a city like Smyrna. And that's going to cause pressure and distress or tribulation. And it's also going to cause poverty because some businesses aren't going to want to be tied to you. They're not going to want to be associated with your values. We see that in culture today, do we not? This is an intensely pagan city and they are, the church is trying to be followers of Christ. So it's not going to be easy for them. But that's part of the challenge, and we'll, we'll get to that in a later video. Another good thing they're doing is they're not part of these false teachers who claim to be Jewish teachers, rabbis, leaders, we're not sure. But they're actually a synagogue of Satan, a church of Satan. John's language here is actually very strong. Uh, remember, he is also Jewish. And historically, it's been this has actually been taken as an anti Semitic statement, but that's obviously not what's going on here at all. John's not being derogatory. He's not being inflammatory here. He's just being very matter of fact. These people say they are Jewish and they might even be from the Jewish community, but that's not who they're representing. Not really. Uh, what is clear is that what it seems like these people call themselves Jews and they call themselves um, people who were allies of God, but they apparently have taken the lead in the persecution of the church. And that wasn't really uncommon in that time. Uh, we actually see glimpses of that in the book of Acts. The, the Jewish people would sometimes be quick to turn over Christians to the Roman authorities. 
Um, we see that especially in the Apostle Paul's life. So they're, they're so accusatory, they're so accusing of the brethren that they become synonymous with the Satan, who means, what that means, the accuser. Could also be that there were two heresies trying to force their way into the church. That's another theory about that statement. Um, any church that would preach a gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout history, that sometimes gets called a, a synagogue of Satan. Uh, we see this in churches today, and here Christ himself condemns that sort of thing because they're teaching a message other than what was laid down in the word of God. Anytime someone deviates from Scripture to give their own agenda and not the agenda of Christ, they are operating outside of Christ. And that is to say they're operating as a, a synagogue of Satan. At least that's what some scholars believe is happening here. And let's be clear, every false religion, every heretical theology typically has a handful of similar characteristics. They try to make God, and by that I mean the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, to be something that he's not, and they attack the deity of Christ. Um, remember, if I've said this just recently. I've said if someone, a Bible translation, takes John 1.1 1, 1 and tampers with it, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. If there's another translation that tampers with that and tries to skew what that says or what that means that's not a bible translation that's heresy it's trash and any heresy or cult will attack that they'll also attack the virgin birth the death and the resurrection of christ or they'll try and elevate man and lower god in a way to make man a god himself um, a few years back someone gave me a cd to listen to and one of the things that the lady said on the CD was, do you know God doesn't have any power because he gave it all to his church? That is an abominable thing to say. That's a horrible thing to say. And it's heretical, obviously. So we, we have to be aware of those things and those markers, those red flags. And that's something that the church in Smyrna was gifted at. That's something they saw. Um, that's, that's what we really see Christ saying they're doing good, they're using discernment, and they're watching out for these things. And I think that's what, if we want a compliment from Christ, a good, encouraging word from him, we also have to be exercising discernment. All right, well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. Uh, next week, we're going to be looking at the bad stuff Jesus has to say for the church of Smyrna. All right, God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next one.